Did we find any clarity regarding a Russian ship that docked here at Cape Town? Did the president deliver any clarity on that? It was alleged that South Africa had supplied weapons to Russia during the current Ukraine-Russia conflict. You're referring to infamous lady ours? No, we haven't. Are relevant to the principles that inform our relations with the rest of the world. Our policy of non-alignment. What we know is that the Lady R never intended to dock in one of our official customs ports of entry. Which so they were not on the books. Well, exactly, and that's why the allegations leveled against our country had a most damaging effect on our currency, on our economy, and our standing in the world. In fact, it tarnished our image as a country. And I think they knew at that stage that whatever they planned to offload and to reload would not meet the minimum criteria and standards of the official customs agents at the official ports of entry. To ensure that the docking of the Russian ship in Simonstown was thoroughly investigated, I appointed a three-member independent panel. It had to be high-level authority and approval for two naval vessels to go out and escort the Lady R into False Bay in Simonstown. They knew at that stage already that it was most probably irregular and illegal. The panel found that there was no evidence to support the claim that the ship transported weapons from South Africa destined for Russia. Even at that stage, the Lady R's destination was not given as Cape Town or South Africa, it was given as Dar es Salaam. Oh so, wow, so that's a far way off. The panel established that the ship docked at Simonstown to deliver equipment that had been ordered for the South African National Defense Force in 2018 by AMSCO. And when the Lady R sailed into False Bay, uh, IIS was switched off, but I mean she was visible for everybody in Simonstown, so it was clear already on that first evening that something is wrong. Neither AMSCO nor the South African National Defense Force had any control whatsoever over the means through which the supplier of the ordered equipment would transport them to South Africa. One must remember a commercial vessel never dock in a naval port, not for a very good reason. And then a normal import and export of ammunition always take place via normal commercial customs ports of entry. All relevant permits had been obtained for the importation of the equipment that were delivered by the ship. No permit was issued for the export of arms and no arms were exported. And when the USA ambassador came out to make that revelation, that was to a certain extent good news to me because that was a further corroboration of the information that I have had. Given the fact that the evidence given to the panel was classified, and the fact that revealing the details of the equipment offloaded could jeopardize the work and safety of South Africa's forces in various deployments on the continent. I have decided not to release the panel's full report. I was aware already that first week of what was offloaded and delivered to ammunition depot. And even after the trucks left Simonstown, I've got incredibly reliable information that on uh, 3 o'clock that Friday morning, they were still busy loading, and by 6 o'clock, half past 6, the Lady R left the Simonstown ports. When all matters are considered, none of the allegations made about the supply of weapons to Russia have been proven to be true, and none of the persons who made these allegations could provide any evidence to support the claims that had been leveled against our country. If nothing was illegal, then why first of all have an investigation of that nature and then declare it to be confidential and not to be made public? The panel has given me an executive summary of the report, which I have decided to release publicly. This will be done tomorrow. What do you think are the Russians doing? If you were to put your, I don't know, conspiracy is not the right word because we know it happened, but yeah. what is the Russians after? What is the story here? I think the Russians are busy with a much bigger plan. It's more a global, modern way of imperialism. Every time where South Africa was involved, they have used it or abused it for propaganda purposes. Whether it was the Lady R, whether it was the uh, exercise Mosi, where they have already declared in Russia by their state news agency that they would launch the hypersonic missile. 
which apparently they never planned any way to do, but they got the world's attention. And then obviously during the exercise, there was nothing for us to gain, but it was all for Russia to make public noise and get the public opinion. And then just shortly after that, the invitation to the chief of the army to go and visit Moscow. Now that was not declared and we were not told about that in advance. So I think it's all about the influence sphere, a battle of strength between Russia and China. South Africa is caught in the middle. South Africa don't know whether it is in the most important interest of South Africans to be loyal to their socialist inclinations and previous support, or whether they must rather support the economic well-being and job creation and growth of economy in South Africa. And the Russians don't have any empathy for us. They're in it for themselves, they're in it for their own well-being and their own dominance of the world. I think what is happening in Ukraine is a typical example of how they want to expand their influence. They don't care for a country or their nation or their people. It's all about how they look at those world powers and how they position themselves and what position they will be taking in, into the future. Hopefully the rest of the world in the western side of the world will stay loyal to us and will still stay present in South Africa whenever it is needed that they can step up and uh, help us. Do you think the South African government has the capability to withstand a quote-unquote revolution or even a civil war? Is, is there any potential of a conflict in South Africa? First of all, you're, there's, there's twofold the question. The one is whether I think there will be one. No, I don't think so. And I think that is the uh, nature of South Africans. And I mean, we just don't have the resources and especially the ammunition. The second part is whether the government and the defense force would be able to defend us against a civil war, but also other attacks from outside or adversaries. Uh, I think a civil war, we have shown pretty well in 2021 in KZN, that if it is well organized and we were very much involved with the, as a DA, to facilitate a lot of those things and it showed that we can work together. So I'm pretty confident that we will be able to deal with that. But depending on the kind of attack from outside, if it's via the air or the sea, we have major problems. We still have got a bit of capability on the land, but we have got major challenges in terms of aging prime mission equipment and lowering and smaller budgets and political will and, and the whole attitude of people changing the defense force to a new defense force, investing into technology, for instance, cyber technology, satellite technology, to help us to build a um, kind of a responsive defense force rather than one that has just been seen all over the show and basically achieving not much. Should we be worried about in 2024 the interference of China, Russia, even the United States? This is one of the most important elections ever. Should we be worried about foreign powers? Absolutely, we must be very concerned. We know that especially Russia and China is very much known for influencing or at least trying to influence elections and the outcome of the elections so that they can have an outcome that will be more in favor and support of them. Their technological capabilities and advanced capabilities is on the one side very impressive and on the other side very concerning how they can influence people, their public opinion, but also how they can put money behind that. The potential influence of Russia and China via cyber interventions and influences is a real threat to us. Some, most of our systems, at least from the government side, is still not very much advanced systems. With that, we know that for them to break into a system in South Africa is very, very easy. And hopefully before the elections, we will have our cyber crime bill that has been introduced in Parliament. Hopefully that would come into place and we must hold the government accountable, irrespective of whether they are the ANC or whoever they are. Obviously, as the official opposition, it is important not only to criticize, but to work on alternatives that are better alternatives and offer that and cooperate and work with the private sector especially so that we can you know, rekindle and rebuild and reposition our defense force to a level where we can be proud of them again and they can defend our sovereignty and assure the safety of our people.